I think it does give some benefit of having a bad base here. Who has the loudest fan? 
And your whole designated team onto the court where it is still strict. Please welcome the University of East London. Obviously, coming in here against a team with the, uh, the pedigree of Mark Lockwood, the history of Lockwood. Here we are, probably slight underdogs coming in, but we can actually use that as fuel to get you off. And I was thinking these sorts of things. Important to start well, particularly when you're not ready when you're the underdog. Yeah, 100%. I, I think you'll be able to rally to be able to be honest. You know, they have a, a number of maybe feel like they're the, they've been the underdog, want to be the underdog, want to make uh, points themselves. So in that respect, I don't think it hurts to be able to win. I think it's not feed on things quite well. Um, on the flip side, Luff are obviously very experienced. They're going to feel very poised today. Uh, and there's, there's going to be a lot of pressure from UEL, I think. I think we'll see very physical, very active, very aggressive defense. So we can't let the uh, weather that. It's about being aggressive, about being physical. Yeah, I, I actually watched, obviously, the way on and I share an office, so I actually saw some of the footage while they were scouting you. Yeah. Um, the, uh, very, very aggressive defensively. I know Dave threw away the head coach for a long time. They were just throw out some traps. Might be a half court aggressive zone of some type as well. So there's definitely going to be a lot of pressure on the court. There's going to be a lot of pressure in the passing lanes. And UEL will try and confer that. So they can play and try to get Two very experienced coaches on the other side of the line have been around at this level for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, David Greenway has been there. But it all actually David Greenway has been coached for the lane. So you know that's an interesting one. Take to the floor. Out 
first. So what's more, is it in here supporting that for University Mix yeah. of North? So that's something you'll see every time out in this baby. You know, for that second round of the box. He's not the Mix of North! We certainly get value out of his free game on the line. We certainly do. Love Brogan. Challenges as well, they're always there or thereabouts. And you're starting line up for Lucky University. Number nine, Elijah Bailey. Number 11, Paul Washington. Number 14. So full game underway. He's not the good possession. Ball missed inside, shot yeah, a work well, inside the plate, ball is slipped. This is all rebound, it doesn't get the support of Lasha, pulls that in for their first possession of the ball game. Driving inside, goes up, hits the left. Slowing it down, it's so good, moving left to right. Yeah, it is excellent, that slow Euro step, he goes, loves to draw the contact, makes the bucket there. This is the first few points of his tally. Alonso around the high screen, little hesitation for him, he gets all the way to the rim to drop in the first couple of points for yeah. UEL. Sam played for me, Sam Meccano played for me last year. Very, very quick guard, very good at getting to the rim. Washington, space for three. Well, they dodged a bullet there. Washington is a career 40% three-point shooter. You can't lose him. Yeah, he had a seven or eight three-point game in the last round of the Bucks competition, I believe. Nice uh, hit from the Top of the key. Here we go. Into the lead. Bailey looking to create. Drops it back to Bowman. Shot clock getting low. All the way to the basket. Jams it in. No help defense. Yeah, too easy for Blake. If he's going to get to the rim like that, that's going to be a problem. Corner on the baseline, spinning back in. Bowman gets a little piece of that deflected out of bounds. That East London bench is up looking for a foul. Referee not interested. Very experienced referee crew we've got today for the Bucks game as well. Quite a few BBL games and a, a whole ton of D1 games under this crew's belt. Boza gets it in. Back to, back to Caboza. Inside it goes, shot clock getting low. And that one's off the mark. Rebound pulled in by Bowman. Luffer appeared to be sat in a 2 3 zone there. Bowman under pressure. What a finish off the glass. Blake Bowman through the contact, going to the line for a bonus. Six straight points at the rim for Blake. Looking to make it seven now. Free throw is off the mark, but an offensive rebound pulled in by Hayden and there we go, we don't want one point, we want three. Yeah, 
very active on the glass there, CJ Hayden. That leads to the wide open three for Blake. Well, Bowman absolutely lighting it up here in the uh, early stages. Well, he's got four points now. There's Washington. Bowley in the corner. Trying to find some room. There isn't much there. He gets the shot away, but not before he travelled with it. And that will go back to East London. See if Luff will come back out in that zone on this third ball possession. Looks like they're in man. Caboza are putting it on the floor, sending Washington to the ground, but can't convert. As the ball is pulled back up. Hadley finds Hayden, they reverse the ball to Blake. Roman now putting it on the floor, dancing his way through, gets it off to Headley under pressure, able to convert. And everything at the rim for Luffman to start again. Oh, trying to find some room through the middle there. You know, we'll go to the free throw line. But as you say, for getting to the rim with regularity, it's not quite as easy to get all the way to the basket at this end of the floor so far, but a chance to get some from the free throw line. And alongside of Carno, UEL have a number of crafty guards, good ball handlers who can slice down the lane. But it's certainly been a lot easier for Loughborough to get into the paint at the moment. One or two for Akano. Cuts the gap to four. We've played three and a half minutes here in Loughborough. That's 7 11 in favour of Loughborough. Bowman has done all the damage. Looking for another three. Gets fouled. And he will go to the line for three. And that's the result of making that previous one. That closed out a little closer this time and too close. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they forced the switch on the pick and roll. So you have a mismatch situation there. Big a little worried about the drive. Blake steps back. Goes too hard on the closeout. And now we have three shots. So Blake Bowman doing all of the damage so far this to take him into double figures inside four minutes well, the only thing he hasn't done well so far is shoot free throws go for two now Finds the bottom and right that time 10 points already for bowman it's got to be a concern for UEL, not just because Blake has 10 so early, but because it's going to force them to collapse in on him, which opens up the shooting for Luffer. Across mid-court. Looking for options. Caboza fires up the three, misses everything. Bowman, by the way, with his fourth rebound of the game there. Bowman working the high pick and roll. Spinning into a double team, Washington, back to Bowman, long way into that shot fake, fires it up, halfway down, and that one rims out. Maybe we want to see Blake attack that closeout a little bit with how successful he's been at the ring. Another tough pull up. Off the uh, mark with an offensive rebound, and oh, a bit of a hopeful toss there from uh, Stockage. Bailey now for three. First real look at the basket for him. Can't knock it down. Hayden again on the offensive glass. Bailey driving through. Blocking foul is the call. And Elijah Bailey will go to the free throw line. Yeah, we talked pre-game about Elijah's ability to get in the paint. Uh, he's going to be consistent. He's going to attack both him and Bowman. are going to attack pretty much every possession. The other worry for East London will be the foul starting to mount up a little bit. Jackson is already on the bench on two fouls. Getting some early 
looks from the free throw line. And I just think the last thing you want to do in the early stages of the game is get a scorer, a couple of free throws, just to let them see the ball go through the rim. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, oh, oh, tough beautiful. take. Tough take by Kana. Also, uh, perhaps an issue for UEL in terms of size. They don't have a huge amount of it, so Stockich is coming off the bench. Bielak, who just came in for Connor Washington, airballs that one from the corner. Yeah, with the chance to run the other way. Oh, stumble there from uh, Cooper and turns it over. Bailey. Good ball movement, finds Hayden. Down the middle again, Loughborough getting all the way to the rim. Yeah, and that's where that size could become a problem down the line as well. Loughborough pounding it in the paint at the minute. And that's a tough finisher yet again from Cooper. He's up to six. Yeah, he's made some plays from so far and also confident three point shoot when left open as well. Bailey top of the key front iron on that one. Pitch with the rebound. Caboza stepping around the defender, but tipped out of bounds. That'll go back to Loughborough. And it's only a six point game here, six minutes in, but you definitely get the sense that Loughborough's uh, scoring has come a little bit easier than East London's. Yeah, absolutely. I've uh, been able to get too many easy looks at the rim right now. UEL have had to work a little bit harder, you know, made a couple of tough contested jumpers. Uh, that being said, you know, Dave Greenway will have something to change the pace of the game if it feels like it's an issue for them. Um, and they also have plenty of talent out there on the court, so if they can get to moving the ball a little easier, then I think they'll find some easy looks. Offensive foul called off the ball. I don't quite see that one down under the rim. Connor will bring it forward for Yui Al. Nice little attack into the key. Off the glass, and that's a good talent play. Not much ball movement, but as long as you get points at the end. Absolutely, and Sam loves that bank shot. He's very capable of making that. That's not a fluke shot for him. Um, but yeah, if you're UEO, you'd maybe like to see a little bit more ball movement to create some easier shots. Like that. Like that, exactly. That's the uh, contrast, isn't it? What's coming in at the other end. It's just a little bit easier for Lofter at this stage in time. Caboza down the middle, trying to kick it out to the corner, but his pass is stolen away. Oh my goodness, what a rejection that is. And Dooku taking it to the hole, but Richards with the denial. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, extremely athletic there. That's going to be a shirt pull there, yeah. I believe. Foul is on uh, Right. the ball from the end. Bailey. Uh, slightly bobbled, and there was a shout of travel from the uh, UEL bench, but nothing doing, and Peter with the easy score. baseline picks it out to the wing three-point shot is short Headley with the rebound throws it down court has done well to turn that into points there wasn't easy for me like I stuck with it managed to tip it to himself and then put it in double staggered screen there from Uriel and step up pick and roll Nice pass inside, but even better shot on the uh, fall away from Stogic. Yeah, tough turnaround from him there. He's played two years in NBA 1 now. Um, pretty well-known player across the league in NBA 1. Oh, 
foul call, basket. No, travel is called, in fact. Wave it off. It'll be a sideline ball to East London. It didn't look like a travel from our angle, but maybe the ref had a better look at the back foot on that one. Maybe it slid slightly. Two minutes to go here. Rockwell with an eight point lead. Bump foul. So go back to the side. Washington returns for Loughborough. The big question here is just based purely on the first quarter, is this going to be a bit of a game of attrition where Loughborough keep chipping or are we going to get a strong run now from UEL that brings the game back in? Wow. Called against uh, Peter. It's one of those where the arms are straight up but the body is just sort of shuffling forward and nudging his opponent away from the basket. And Richards will go to the line for two as a result. And the second visit to the free throw line of the first quarter for UEL, one of two on both trips. I think we'll definitely see UEL get to the foul line more. They're a very aggressive team, so I think it's quite likely they're going to keep attacking downhill. Northwood's spot gets away from it. Washington. Three point shot off the uh, mark from Bela. Really nice poise there from Washington against a very aggressive hedge. Easy rebound there, not too many on the offensive glass as far as East London are concerned. Washington for three. And he's done that for so many years. Connor Washington. Yeah, it's a, just a tough take, isn't it? He loves that size up into his three. Into the final minute of the opening quarter. It's a 10 point lock the lead. Oh, the bench again is up screaming for a foul. Yeah, may have got away with that one there. It was very similar to the last one called. Kind of back inside, pick and roll. He'll be looking for another three if he can get it. Michael on the baseline. Did he step on the line? Yes, he did. And that will go back to East London. And kind of very poised in that pick and roll, very hard to speed him up. Oh, up in the air and then saw the big hand of Cater coming at him. Didn't quite know what to do with it and ends up throwing the ball out of bounds. 15.8 seconds on the game clock here for Loughborough to get one last uh, score in this quarter. Yeah, I think we'll see some kind of step up pick and roll for Connor at this point. And he's a guy who's used to having the ball in his hands in this end of quarter situation. Oh, he's lost the ball for a second. He's still got a few ticks to work with. Washington gets it away. Back iron on that. And that will do it for the first quarter here in Loughborough. There it is, the University of East London 16, off the University 26. And I know it sounds fairly uh, obvious, but it's actually just been about degree of difficulty for me. Much easier for Loughborough. Their shots have been uh, more comfortable and clearer uh, path to the basket. Yeah, absolutely, especially to start the game. Bowman getting downhill. Um, little dump off pass to Headley, wide open under the rim. I think it has been much, much easier um, for Loughborough to get those finishes, whereas UEL, you know, they've had some real tough drives to the rim from Meccano, from Cooper. Um, but they're going to have to find some, some easier shots at some point if they want to be able to come back into this game. Well, Dave Greenaway in his huddle here trying to... Uh 
tip things about here at the end of the first quarter and uh, it's kind of both ends of the floor isn't it defensively they need to uh, make it a little bit more difficult and offensively I think they've got lulled into one-on-one -on -one a little bit and maybe not enough ball movement yeah absolutely I'm sure Dave will be talking to them about ball movement quite heavily um, I think you'll also be talking to them about off-ball movement, about cutting. Uh, two of their easiest looks came from 45 cuts off baseline drives. I also think that he'll be very, very focused on the defensive end. I think, you know, you score 16 points, you're not moving the ball particularly well, you can absorb that, but they give up 26, that's probably a big concern. set to get things going here in the second quarter Loughborough with the possession arrow to get us underway Washington brings it forward for them you will do a pretty nice job of uh, getting in the way of that flex action for Connor and breaking it up Loughborough turned it over off Gordon it wasn't the best of uh, passes, but probably should have pulled it in there. Uh, a lot more off-ball movement here from UEL in this set. A lot of curl screens. But, uh, well, as you say, a better offense. So they get the ball back. The question is whether they reset the shot clock on. I don't think it hit the ring, did it? No, they have held it at three. So they'll have to be quick. See Loughborough going to zone on this inbounds, trying to break it up. Seeing, does he see the clock? Yes, he does. Gets the shot away, but it doesn't go for three for Fraser. Bowman has started the game with a hot hand, looking to attack again, getting them all up in the air. And you can see <laughs> there was not one but two defenders, and they're so concerned about him getting anything off. A yeah, real savvy head fake off that spin move, right? Just drew Cooper in. Cooper went for it, trying to get the block. Puts him at the foul line. Bowman, two of four from the free throw line so far but he does have a game high 11 points he'll be a little frustrated with himself he's not shooting better from the free throw line but i don't think that's going to stop him from trying to get to the free throw line at any point in this game well, he goes one for two again slightly different sight lines than they would be used to with the extension baskets over in uh, the third court it's going to be a reach round foul. I believe that's Keita's second now. Yeah, I was just checking the same thing as well. It is his second. So Headley's on two and he's on two. The other way, Jackson got a couple of early fouls for East London. He's not returned since. We talked a little bit about UEL maybe having to worry about foul trouble, but with Headley and Keita on two now, maybe it's more left but they have to have that concern. For looking for options. Drops it off, and the three is good, and uh, that's the first made three pointer of the game for East London. And Reese Sundermore knocking that down, pretty much known as a catch and shoot player. Um, definite threat to hit those shots. Well, I have to know a five from behind the arc before that one. And Bowman under pressure. There's a good challenge, but an even better rebound from Gordon. And Bowman gets it. Bowman bodies all around him and eventually hears the whistle. And Blake Bowman once again going to the free throw line. Yeah, just a lot of willpower and toughness there. Getting off the spin, takes his time after he finishes the spin move. Goes up strong, manages to draw the foul. It's one of those things. The defense is never over until you 
get control of the ball. And he's London couldn't on that occasion. I think he's missed the first one of every trip so far, Bowman. Yeah, I think you're correct. I think it's also quite dangerous. This is his 10th foul, foul shot now that he's taking. Uh, this is his 8th. And he's 4 of 8 from the free throw line. And he's comfortably the leading scorer in the game. Caboza. Gordon or Washington, it is Washington, who is uh, not quite in front. Now number two on Connor Washington as well. I think Coach Maynard will be pretty happy with that. I think he'll trust Connor to go out and play with two fouls. I don't think he'll be saying as much, especially at the goal position. Well, Caboza looking to attack, take advantage, and doing exactly that to lay in his first points of the game. Good ball moving off the drive to Elijah Bailey. Can't make that one. Sunderbolt takes it and outlets it. Those are the shots that Bailey would uh, certainly be looking for. Well, that could be number three there on Connor Washington now. And there is something for Will Maynard to think about. Yeah, three will certainly be a concern. He's also on to his checking back in. Washington is just having a discussion with the official before heading off. A little uh, conversation going on between Bowman and Caboza off the ball. There's yeah, two pretty physical competitors there. Obviously, see each other in the BBL, so I'm sure they'll be ready to fight, ready to work. Neither known for taking a backward step, I think that's fair to say. Absolutely. Caboza moves it on. Corner three is good for Sundermalt, and suddenly he's hit two in quick succession. That's a, a real easy way to get them back into the game, right? Two quick threes, now it's a two possession game. 24 28 the score with seven and a half minutes on the clock it's almost turned over Bailey did well he's in trouble though he has lost it eventually and he's committing the foul trying to get it back good pressure there from Cooper and Bailey just too aggressive trying to recover possession yeah Bailey a little too aggressive with his offhand there probably on the, on the body um, really good recognition from Cooper on the bad pass rather than just let Bailey pick it up. He went out there, used the halfway line to apply some more pressure on him. Well, foul deemed to be in East London's backcourt, so they get a full shot clock as a result of that. The Bozer will amble it across the halfway line. And stumbling to the ground, Cooper's able to keep possession of the ball. Caboza to the spin, beautiful move. Couldn't quite get the finish, but his teammate is on hand to help him out. Fraser's first points of the game. And I think there was a timeout called there, but the noise of the crowd, the referees didn't hear the horn. But what a recovery here from uh, East London in this second quarter. They were down by 10 coming into this period, and they reeled. Almost all of those back. It's actually 26 28 with a 10 2 start to the period by Dave Greenaway's side. Yeah, and just much better at both ends. A lot more ball movement, a lot of player movement off the ball as well on the offensive end. Forcing Lefford to guard a little bit more, opening up those kickouts for threes. And then a little bit tougher in the interior, a little bit more set. Lefford maybe a little less ball movement than they had at the beginning. And also they've uh, forced Loffa into having to adjust things with the foul trouble they've had with the way they've attacked as well. So definitely a shift in the momentum here in the second period. Not very comfortable 
for Loughborough through the first 10 minutes, but anything but since then. A chance for them to uh, potentially tie the game here. And as we said before the game tip off, there's absolutely no way that UEL will back down and they will continue to play for the entire game and they will push the pace and fight at every opportunity. And Dave Greenaway again getting as much of that, <laughs> yeah. out of that time out as possible. Yeah, full value out of his 60 seconds. Teams back out on court. Just under seven minutes left in the first half here. Two point. Loughborough lead. He, uh, did lead by as many as 11. Headley. Keep at the top of the key. You see the zone there from UEL. Bailey finds the gap at the elbow and knocks it down. And that is something Elijah Bailey does very, very well is get to that mid range and rise up to knock down the mid range jump shot. Well, there's a man down, but uh, the shot still went up from Sundermalt, his first missed three of the contest. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a physical contest today, neither team's going to back down. Oh, the hook called against Victor Nguku as he span baseline. And that's another foul against Loughborough. Yeah, and almost, almost a reversal of what we saw in the first quarter in terms of the foul count now. This definitely will make it easier as uh, with six minutes left to play, UEL will be in the penalty and shooting to free throws each time left for a foul now, which will help them to get back into this lead. Cooper here looking for the post up, swings it to Caboza. Caboza attacks downhill. A little off balance. Bowman comes up with the rebound. Well, they could do with a bit more. Blake Bowman, offensive firepower. Loughborough here, as we saw early in the game, he tries to deliver. Well, it's saved, but only uh, at the cost of a sideline possession. And Loughborough's offense has really dried up in this quarter just a couple of scores so far yeah absolutely you feel like they can maybe do with a little bit more action before looking to attack the rim maybe force the defense to play a little bit more before they actually go in and make that final drive 26 30 the score midway through approaching the midpoint of the uh, quarter and there's another offensive foul on the drive to the basket as consistent consistent from the officials two hooks two calls uh, that was definitely not a foul when I first started playing but uh, <laughs> clearly an area of emphasis for the rest of this season because I've seen it in multiple competitions and multiple reps so crazy was the offender on that occasion Bailey to Bowman. Bowman, that little jab and spin. Headley under pressure from the elbow, misses. Caboza with the rebound. Strong box out from UEL there so they can get out on the break. Battle between Caboza and Bowman is interesting in there. Two, two of the BBL players in the game going at each other, matched up right now. Well, Caboza takes it away from Bowman. out the three patted about Caboza oh he's blown the layup but eventually they do get their points out of it East London Richard stays with it there after his big block in the first quarter comes down with the offensive rebound and puts it back in Cooper is a very capable shooter so it'll be interesting to see if he gets going even more especially from beyond the three point line Cooper's going to fire up the three off the mark Cooper looking to attack this time, too strong off the glass. Headley pushing the other way. Drops it forward to Bailey. And that 
has gone against the offensive player, really questioning what his number's been showed to the table. And that's uh, the third foul now on Elijah Bailey, really racking up the fouls here, Loughborough, with still 3.58 to go in this uh, second quarter. And uh, just two points separating the team. Loughborough's offense is really stuttered in this second quarter. Yeah, absolutely. It just doesn't feel like there's an awful lot of action to it. It's a lot of one-on-one. Um, and then when they do drive one-on-one -on -one and don't draw and draw the help, the kickouts are maybe coming a fraction slow, so they're not getting any advantage, they're not getting any extra passes right now. Good job from UEL of uh, containing those initial drives and stopping that. I'd like to see Loughborough come out next play, run a maybe a bit of a longer set, something with some multiple screening actions or cutting, get the ball moving a little bit more. Well, it's one of those things that maybe it sounds counterintuitive maybe it just came a little too easy for them early on and they got a little too comfortable as a result of that yeah i don't think it's counterintuitive at all i think when you come out in your first four or five possessions you can go one-on-one -on -one, get to the rim pretty easily it's very easy for that to become a pattern and you know teams adjust that's the nature of basketball nobody gets beat by the same thing for 40 minutes so uel have adjusted here can love to make a counter adjustment now making their way back out onto court. Foul by the way was only, I uh, think, Bailey's second. I had him down for two already, but I must have made a mistake. On that. Shot off the mark. Good work on the offensive glass from Fraser. A lot of flare screens coming here from UEL. Trying to free up space both for the wings but also for the ball handler to get downhill while the flare's being guarded. Hayden got his hands on the ball in the end there for Loughborough. And we're off the mark for three. Chance to run for Sundermill. Waits for some support. And Carno driving to the rim, takes the contact, and he will shoot two. Again, with a strong downhill drive from Akano. UEL have a number of guards in Cooper, in Caboza, in Akano who can get into that paint, get downhill, especially towards the, the right hand side of the lane. Well, they haven't managed to get to the free throw line as often as you might have thought, given the number of attackers that they have. This guy is going for the second time now, he's one for two on his first trip. Carno knocks down the first. Lines up the second. And we are level at 30 points apiece. We're just over three minutes to play in the first half here. First half in which Loughborough led by as many as 11. The second quarter has been very much bossed by East London to this point. And a chance for them to now gain the lead. They haven't been ahead since the early stages of the contest. Moses is going to fire up the three. Front iron on that. Everybody boxing out, so that'll be a Loughborough ball. You can see on the last defense how their focus has changed. If Bowman has the ball, they're collapsing, they're forcing kickouts, really not trying to let him get to the rim like he did in the first five minutes of the first quarter. Hayden on the low block, and Duke will come into the middle. Good ball movement. Elak penetrates, kicks. Shot clock getting low. 
Headley knocks it up. That's a bit more like it from Loughborough with the ball movement. 100%, 100%. Nice set. Using the post to execute action. Kick out, extra pass, extra pass drive. Really good use of the advantage basketball there. Nice double stagger here from UEL into the post up. Nice footwork as well, but comes back off the iron for Jackson. Trying to get himself in the game after those early fouls. Duke for three, strings it. Victor and Duke is from behind the arc. Timely run for Luffer right now. They want to get a stop here so they can continue to build. Oh, circles back out. Thunderbolt looking for it, blocked by Pilak. And Loughborough come away with it. Bowman. Kick to the corner. Three doesn't go. Good looks for Loughborough in transition. You can see the, the fact that they're all oh, nice spin move by Kaboza. Maybe got away with a foul there from Bilak. Well, they get some points. Uh, in the end, UEL. Well, this time going to the rim, having hit a couple of early threes. It's first two-point field goal of the game. Reflected away, but that will stay with Loughborough. 45 seconds remaining. And our on-screen clock is not the game clock. Uh, an approximation of where we are. 44.9 to be uh, precise. It's 32.35. Timeout going to be called here. I always think situations like this, you essentially got two plays, maybe three if somebody goes quick, left in it. Can really shift the momentum of the game. If you just say Loughborough got five points, they go into the locker room, are paid. East London get five points. They're going to the locker room with the lead and real momentum shift, depending on which of those two things happens, if either. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why Dave Greenway's taking a bit of a risk here, because he's calling the timeout on Loughborough's possession. So he's giving Will Maynard a chance to draw something up. But he also probably trusts his group that if they can get a stop here, they're going to execute, maybe get two possessions out of this. And like you say, have that five point swing, which could be massive to give them some momentum going into the half time. There's 15 seconds on the shot clock. It's not going to come out of the huddle. Be interested to see what Loughborough come out with here. Uh, if I had to take a guess, I'd say maybe some Spanish pick and roll or a flare action for a shooter. Um, but we'll see. And we'll see if. UEL counter it with a zone of some kind, possibly. Well, it's knocked away. Great defense. Caboza getting his hands in there, and they get to run quickly. And that's going to be a goal 10. The basket will count. Was there a foul called on the baseline as well, or were they both sitting on goal 10? One referee called goal 10. I thought the other referee called a foul. So it could possibly be an M1. Or, or were they both sitting on the same thing? Ah. Uh. I think you might be right. I think it was a pretty tough call to call the foul from the baseline if that was the case. And they have called it. Yeah, it is a foul. So a bonus free throw coming. Bowman called for his first personal foul. The goal 10 means the basket is good. And East London with a chance to level the scores at 35 points apiece. And given 34 seconds on the game clock, they should get that possession back as well so a stop and a score and they've got that five points I was talking about yeah, absolutely absolutely you know came out aggressive in the pick and roll coverage great the turnover they get an and one can't convert there though the zone here from UEL is from almost turned over again oh, he's getting his hands on it Dave Greenaway somehow ended up over the halfway line there to <laughs> have a conversation with Steve Desmond, the referee. Uh, looks like an 
aggressive. 2-3, three, 3-2 three, possibly. They forced it again. UEL, great defense on the last couple of plays. To let nothing come through. So Connor has it crossing midcourt. Six seconds to go. He looks to get into the key. Fires up high, doesn't go. Chance maybe for a three-quarter court he from Bowman. And that will do it for a very tight first half here. He's very much Luffer in the first quarter. Very much East London in the second and therefore it's almost on as even at the half here east london 34 Loughborough 35. well a really fascinating uh, first half and you would say that east london defensively the, the switch between the beginning of that first half and the end of that first half completely different yeah, 100%. I think what we saw in the first five minutes was probably an adjustment period for them, trying to get used to the pace of the game. Um, but then, you know, especially that last five, last three minutes there, last two minutes coming out the time, or last 40 seconds, in fact, coming out the timeout, really aggressive in the zone, lots of high hands, forcing turnovers, more of what we expected to see from them uh, before the game started. Well, the championship game very much in the balance here in Loughborough. We're at the half. It's a one-point game. Loughborough just edging it over East London, 35-34. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with the second half in a little while. really do your research into the private equity sector. Don't be put off by this kind of mysticism that potentially lies around it. Do your research not only to help with your application and interview process, but also to see if you personally would like to work at that place or that sector or that field. What makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business. And with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training, you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one, you're paired up with your mentor, who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers. You can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of store operations. It was actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Since I first started at ICG, I think I've progressed massively, um, not only in kind of the understanding of the industry and through lots of different training courses, but I think just in general confidence. Being given all these responsibilities and seeing your work having an impact definitely like gives you more confidence in your capabilities. I feel like I gained more experience um, and knowledge into the private equity space, which has helped me gain more responsibility in other roles um, within my team. What surprised me most about ICG is how open and supportive everyone's been. I think the, the strong culture that it has. I have a lot of access to kind of senior people and they're always happy to talk to you. Benefit of having a mentor, especially so early on in our careers, is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team.
Well, welcome back to Bucks Big Wednesday, powered by New Balance here at Loughborough University. And we have the men's basketball championship game here. And it's very much in the balance. East London 34, Loughborough 35. And it was a half of two halves there with Loughborough starting the game so well, leading by 11 early on. But East London definitely getting the better of the last five six minutes of that half and could potentially have taken the lead going into uh, into this second half but they find themselves only a point behind and in some ways that's where you want to be isn't it just keep yourself particularly from how they started keep yourself in the game yeah 100 i think at this point in the game you don't you don't really care if you're one basket down one possession down you you feel like that's a nil-nil game almost it only when it comes down to the clutch that it becomes an issue uh, giving up that one point. Uh, I think it's interesting looking at the scoring. You know, Bradley Caboza only one of nine for UEL, but a nice spread between Cooper and Okano. I think they have 18 uh, between them, uh, 17 between them. And then on the flip side, you've got 13 for Bowman, but nobody else for Loughborough is above five points. Well, you would imagine Caboza will certainly improve on his first point shooting, first half shooting. Nice. Positioning inside, but no finish. Not for this time, able to secure possession of the ball through Bowman. Headley try to enter the ball into the horns. Bit of a struggle. Good defense from UEL. Bowman step back for three. Front iron on that one. Good box out from Caboza. There's a 
big hit there uh, that Fraser felt the full force of. Yeah, Headley's a pretty sturdy body. Is Stockage knocks down the three there. His first triple of the game, only the third of the contest for UEL with a two of 11. Oh, it's turned over. Uncharacteristic mistake by Washington, who then doesn't really get out of the way and commits a foul, and that is a big blow for Loughborough at the start of the second half. Connor Washington picks up foul number four. Yeah, it's a huge, huge issue there. Um, trying to be on four fouls will be a problem for them. And an uh, uncharacteristic turnover from Connor, who doesn't normally turn the ball over in that kind of situation. Uh, very rare to see that from him. And he's still getting it explained to him. Loughborough with six players on the court because Washington's being subbed out. He's not gone off yet. Here he goes. As you mentioned in the first half, Dan, a little worry here. Do these free throws let Carboza settle a little bit, give him a bit of rhythm, open look at the basket to get himself rolling? Nice. Stretched his team into a three point advantage. There's a technical in there as well because it's a yeah. no lineup. I, I believe that the technical was given during the free throw. Well, Caboza gets an extra little bonus one there. Couldn't see what it was for from our angle, whether it was for the bench or whether it was on court. Well, Caboza can give his team their biggest lead of the game as a result of these free throws, and he certainly does. So East London with a five-point lead here. Their best of the game, Loughborough in a bit of trouble here. What is their response going to be? Bailey down the lane to the finger roll off the glass. Yeah, an aggressive take there from Bailey off the pick and roll with Hayden, gets right to the rim. I think they'll look to lean on Elijah a bit more, probably spread the scoring across the talent that they've got more in this third quarter now. Moves it over and suddenly everything is going in for East London. Real momentum for them. Yeah, and Cooper's a very, very good shooter. Quite happy to take contested shots. Uh, he's a real threat for East London right now. Headley. He gets into the lane. Kicks it out. And tossed in. Nice move. Oh, Belak noticed the shooter, but he's had three of those either off uh, catch and drive or one off a cut as well, I believe. So getting to the rim effectively for Luffer right now. Just to clear that technical up, it was on Blake Bowman. Something he must have said during those free throws. And once again, it's going to be foul shots for Bradley Cabozzi. He's going to get another three here. Six foul shots in the first two and a half minutes of the quarter for Caboza is certainly not going to hurt UEL at this point. Well, he's made just one field goal in the game so far, but that is his fourth free throw. And his fifth, they've all gone in. Perfect for Bradley Caboza from the free throw line. The lead now up to seven for East London. Elijah Bailey with a puller. Again, knocks it down. Exactly what he, what he wants. He wants to get to his spot and rise up. And it's exactly what Lockwell need right now. Offense hard to come by for them. And if you go back, they're 26 points in the first quarter. So just 13 in 13 minutes since then it's really dried up credit to UEL and how well they've defended them but Lockwood have got to find a way Connor down the lane off the glass what a finish 
tough, tough take from Meccano against the zone. Henley now bringing it up, reverses it to Bowman. And looking again for that isolation from Bailey. Bailey squares up, attacks, and lays it home for two. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be Loughborough's key area of attack right now. He's trying to isolate Bailey against Meccano, where he's got a bit of a height mismatch. 1-3-1 one, one zone here for Loughborough. Looking to try and keep UEL out of the pain as much as possible, but can see the wide open three to Caboza. Can't knock it down. 48-43. UEL with the lead. Bailey's starting to feel it. Nice little dump off to Hayden roll into the hole. A uh, little bit of a momentum shift now. Loughborough have it to within three. UEL want to come down and execute a good set here against this 1-3-1. Off, falling to the screen. Little hesitation again. He gets to the basket. Great offensive rebound to uh, keep that alive. I think. And the extra pass and jammed in. Great offense from the University of East London. They're switching with Kaboza picking up Bailey. Bailey still wants to go to work against him. Another tough pull up from Elijah Bailey. He's starting to really feel it here in the third quarter. And he's keeping his team in touch. Connor for three. Bit of a heat check that. Stock it Jackson for the foul on the rebound, but I don't think he's going to be able to pick that one up. Bailey's open in the corner for three. Off the mark, batted all the way up top to Bowman. Finds his way through the lane. Fighting for his own rebound. There's people up in the air. Fraser's going to get called for the foul, and that will be his third. Bowman just so patient around the rim. Takes his time, uses that head fake to his advantage, gets people up in the air and draws the foul. Foul oh, going to get a breather. I don't know on that previous attack of his whether he just came up a little hobbly, whether there's a little issue with him, but he's certainly going to sit down for a few minutes with uh, Sunderbolt returning to the game and Bowman continuing to struggle with the first free throw as he did in the first half I think that substitution for Sundermolt in for Ocano might be more to put more shooting in against the zone try and spread the floor a little bit uh, especially with Caboza being able to create a little bit off the dribble now Cooper and Sundermolt both very effective shooters should help them to spread the floor well, Bowman cuts it to a Two-point game. A little quick there from Stockich. Uh, Headley also goes a little quick and misses. Loughborough now in a 2-3. Big real emphasis from Loughborough switching defenses, trying to confuse UEL a bit and keep them out of the paint wherever possible. Great backdoor cut and find there. Composer to stop each on the cut. Well, they couldn't keep them out of the paint on that occasion. Bailey gets it on to Bailey. Bailey back on on the three. Bowman gets the loose ball. Foul is called. Great job by CJ Hayden to keep the ball alive. And then Bowman seems to get so many of those fouls at this level where he just puts the ball. People underestimate how long that reach of his is. He manages to draw that foul, whether it's off the drive or off a rebound like that. Well, green away. Just having a little discussion with the referee. There's quite a history there from when... Dave used to coach at Nottingham Wildcats back yeah, in the day, yeah. so. Bailey <laughs> shots over the top. I don't think it hit anything, but it's allowed to go straight out of bounds, so Uriel will get it back. So we've seen, you know, quite a classic UEL starting to get a quarter on a run. Loughborough have had their run back, which seems going to latch on and get a run here to try and put them ahead. 
Fraser steps back to the mid range, strings it. Beautiful shot. Yeah, it's a tough shot. Headley going coast to coast. With his back to basket count finish. Another yeah. dump off pass. Yeah, it's a I think that's just straight out of bounds. So loud in here to tell what every decision is. A really good stand by Milo Gordon there, trying to stop that layup, but it can get another great backdoor cut from UEL. So it's a UEL ball from the end. It's 15 seconds on the shot clock. It's into Kabozu, who's wide open for a second. Bailey closes it out. Gordon with the rebound. A little reach foul there. Going against uh, Cooper. Yes, though. Carno comes back in to replace Cooper here. And they'll switch him so that he's not guarding Elijah Bailey. Luca all the way out to the three point line to get the inbound. Headley driving, his pass is broken up. Boza. Shot clock getting low. Oh no, banks it in. Really tough there, couldn't get it off the step back, used the pivot jab and then managed to get the fade away off and off the glass. Bailey with the change of pace, can't convert. Needs to get back on D, they have numbers here. Oh, that one. Misses everything straight out of bounds, and the fans let him know all about that one, Sundermont. Bowman's comes back in to give Elijah Bailey a break here. Well, Bowman has. 14 points, but most of them came in the first four minutes of the game. Henley draws a foul on that drive. He'll be sidelined to Loughborough. That will put UEL in the penalty for the rest of the quarter. 2.20 to go here. UEL with it. Eight point lead, having trailed by as many as 11 in the first half. Looking for their first box championship in the men's basketball. That one doesn't drop for Headley, but he will go to the line for two. just feel a little bit at the moment that both teams are playing the same game, a lot of isolation, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It maybe just lends a little bit more to UEL's strengths, allows them to create some simple openings. Um, you just want to see Loughborough maybe move the ball a little bit more. That being said, UEL's off-ball cutting has been excellent. They found that baseline cut a couple of times now. violation there but the shot went in so it doesn't matter and it is a six point gap once again oh, no, looking for the cutters gets it back now he attacks himself down the lane a little bit short that and Tipped out of bounds. Last touched by Jackson, so it'll be a lock of ball. 
this goes right back to what you said at the end of the second quarter, Dan. This is the point where, you know, can Loughborough get a five-point run here, a six-point run? Or will East London go on that run and stretch it out to double figures? Well, psychologically, if uh, East London gets to double figures, haven't been down double figures, that would be huge for them. Duke barreling his way through, can't convert. It's still about. Eventually, Stukic gets the rebound. Ball back in Akano's hands as he skips it across. He's certainly been controlling things for East London. So they're trying to go to work and crowd it out, but they get it back, so a new 14. Akano, nowhere to go, stumbling over. Shot clock getting low, it's away, and it's away off the mark as well great, with the rebound. great defense there by Victor Nakubis uh, to stay in front and not allow Akano pass him to the rim deflected away out of bounds for a Loughborough possession just under 50 seconds to go here in the third Double team comes for Nduka, that leaves Bowman open on the far side. Wrong man to lose for there. 17 points now for him. Three points separate the teams. Again, big play here. Stopping a score for Loughborough. And it could be a tight game. Well, they don't get the stop. Nice drive to the basket for Sandoval. And a, a big performance so far by Sunderbolt, knocking down really timely shots for UEL, both on the three-point line and the floater down the middle. Gordon for three, it's a little early, but it gives his teammate, oh, kind of misses the uh, putback. And time expires on the third quarter, and it is a five-point UEL lead going into the last 10 minutes. They've won that period by six to build up that advantage and well for a long swathe Loughborough looked like they couldn't score but they finally found a little bit of rhythm there towards the end of that quarter the problem now is that they've got to find another little step to get themselves back into the lead yeah absolutely and they're going to want to do it sooner rather than later you know they're really going to want to start this quarter very strong try and get that lead reduced get it back to a zero zero game as quickly as possible so that then when the uel run comes they can absorb that and then make a play Ten minutes to play here in Loughborough, the University of East London. The runners up in 2019 to Loughborough with the lead with five minutes to go against the defending champions and the champions of 2019, 18, 17, 16 as well. Loughborough's name is rip large all over this competition. But they're in danger of being dethroned here today by a really good performance from East London through 30 minutes. A slow start maybe, but they've more than made up for that since then. And they will have the advantage going into the final quarter. Loughborough will have the first possession though. Yeah, and Loughborough really want to get a good look off of this, whether it drops or not. The quality of the shot is going to be very important to them here. Also be very interesting, Dan, to see if we have some things that the coaches have kept in their bag for this kind of moment. Well, Bailey, who was 
carrying Loughborough. The, oh, it's an offensive foul for an illegal screen against Nduku, and that is not what uh, Will Maynard would have wanted coming out of that break. Dave Greenaway, the coach of uh, UEL, as you say, a lot of experience, won a lot of trophies. You mentioned his time at Nottingham, very successful time it was too in the uh, Women's British Basketball League. Trying to get East London to their first men's championship here in Bucks. So lovely from the uh, free throw line. UEL showed a little bit of pressure now. Trying to disrupt. A lot of space for Bowman to attack here, but now they've loaded up again. They're very heavy on the help. He somehow finds a way through, forces a shot up, it doesn't go. And this is big moments here for East London. A chance to stretch it possibly to as many as 10. Yeah, every bucket here will count for East London. Looks like Spanish pick and roll here. Sundermott is the back screener. Down to Ocano. He gets two feet in the key, has to shoot it up, nearly banks it in. Luffer get a stop, they desperately need it, but they need some points to go with it. And Duku, you're a step in his way through, left that one short. Headley with the offensive rebound. Headley, wide open from the mid-range. Oh, the follow from Bailey, can't tip it home. Really, that first Headley shot has to go in. That leads to a break for Carno, and he can't quite convert. Well, scrappy play. Bailey now along the baseline. Out to Bowman for three. Got it! Massive shot from Bowman to knock down the triple and cut this one to a four-point game. Yeah, and comes off ball movement, right? Drive, kick, second drive, second kick, extra. Really, really important, I think, for both teams right now that the more ball movement they get, the better looks they're going to get. Down to four, but as long as East London can keep scoring with Loughborough, they have the advantage. The Boza gets it back, with a little poke at the ball. Shot clock down to six, fired up from corner, misses everything. Bailey with the rebound. Didn't go inside the three-point line that time for UEL. Bailey to the mid-range. Ooh, halfway down, but back out. Oh, so far in, you almost want to give him a point for it. A very concerted effort here by Loughborough to get the ball out of uh, Caboza's hands. Well, Duca diving on the floor, able to come up with it. Our first will play out there to Bailey. Washington. Bailey under pressure, gets it away. And he's been so crafty today. He's drawn so many fouls. They've really struggled to keep in front of him. That's the seventh foul he's drawn today. He just does such an effective job of controlling his ball on, his, on the ball on the dribble pickup. He can put it low, he can put it high. Loves to try and raise it over his head, draw contact with it, and then maneuver it to finish. Well, he's already had 10 free throws today. He's only made five of them. You would be thinking, well, a little better from the line and we could be ahead, but he's got a chance to make it. A two-point game here with seven minutes to play. And this very much comes to what we talked about before the game, Dan. We talked about Loughborough having that experience and, and that poise and having been here before. Will East London be able to show that poise up two now and in order to create good shots and get good stops? It almost feels like they need to stay. Oh, he's gone down here. Bailey trying to force the steal, and that's going to be a hell ball. But uh, Sundermark got himself in a bit of trouble there when he hit the deck. 
will on the possession arrow stay with East London. It's halfway through the shot clock, so it's 12 seconds remaining. Kaboza around the screen, looks to attack Kaboza to the rim, and he finger rolls it in. as easy a look as he's had all game really absolutely coach made our well behind tough hesitation by Bailey finds Keeter under the rim can't hold on to it it's a little low I'm not sure he was quite expecting it it's gone out of bounds whose ball is it it's going to be locked for possession there's eight on the shot clock Bailey. Bailey under pressure and he takes the foul as well so he will go to the free throw line. A very effective job of drawing the contact by Bailey managed to get a slight advantage on the hit and just went into him and gets himself to the foul line. Roger Bailey all string on the first this to make it a two point game with six and a half minutes to go here in the final no doubts on the second either Washington backs away from Caboza. Under the screen. An interesting matchup there with Washington on Caboza with four fouls. Oh, great defensive play, but Stokic gets the offensive rebound and he turns it into two points. Almost traveled on that rebound, but managed to keep his composure and put it in. Washington has the switch and he fires up the three and he finds the bottom of the net. It's a one point game. Such a quick and easy release. Knocks down that shot. Remember, he's been off the court for the vast majority of the game in foul trouble, so if he can get going, it's a huge difference maker. Oh, Kabozov, how did that come out? And Duku, Euro in his way to the basket, but he can't give luck for the lead. That one rims out as well. Just over five to play here. East London still with the narrowest of leads. Tokic in the corner. Shot clock getting low. It's away. It doesn't go. Batted out, but straight into the hands of Caboza, who spins it in off the glass. Tough finish from Bradley Caboza. He is a guy. Oh, I just thought for a second there might be some issue with uh, batting the ball away. But Composer, I was just about to say, he is a guy that can finish from almost any angle. It doesn't matter whether he's facing the basket, back to the basket, horizontal, vertical. Somehow he manages to spin in all kinds of shots. Yeah, he's got a nice package, layup package there. Good extension with both hands, really good control. And, you know, we, we wondered if he would get going a little bit coming into this fourth quarter, and he certainly has at the moment. has been down this path before can he see his team home with five minutes to go or will Dave Greenaway be the one celebrating at the end of it it's been everything we hoped for before the game hasn't it, it really has set up for a grandstand finish yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be a real hectic finish going into this last five minutes. And it should all be also be noted both these teams have come back from really sizable margins during the course of the year. So they're both 
have been in the situation where they're down. They've both been in the situation where they've been up. They, they're experienced in these situations coming into this final. So it should be a really competitive last five minutes. Well, it's a Loughborough ball from the end. We are one tick under five minutes remaining. And just one shot separating these two clubs. Here's Bailey. Washington relocates for three. Connor Washington gets the friendly roll and the scores are level at 66. Yeah, huge shot from Connor there. Loughborough a lot smaller now, probably to take advantage on the perimeter offensively. Is it going to hurt them on the other end? Caboza. Oh, he's lost the ball. He's got it back, but he's travelled with it. Dean never to have fully lost control of it I guess he's not sure about that but the official is that's a traveling violation called against him so Loughborough can retake the lead well, they spent most of this second half chasing the game can they get their noses in front Bailey and Duku now for three. He strings it. Back to back threes for Loughborough and they're ahead. Loughborough go to the same set twice. Find two different options off it. Connor on the first, Victor on the second. Connor under pressure. Gets it away. Caboza for three. And that one's in and out. There's a grab there on and Duku has his hands up. So yeah, my fault there. He just briefly lost Fraser. Probably a, a very smart foul, actually, given the situation of the game. Takes away a chance for a put back. Allows them to set up defensively. Well, they've done a great job crashing the offensive glass all game. East London, I think it's a 19th offensive rebound. They might want one or two more second chance points. They have got 12 from 19. You might want a couple more, but this game will come down to who can make a big play like that an offensive rebound a defensive stop a steal because it's at this point in the half court it's going to be hard to score if you can get a cheap point from an offensive rebound or a fast break from a steal those are priceless absolutely uh, every point is going to count here and, and this is why we're seeing the timeouts from both coaches as well right trying to draw something up trying to find counters to those tough half court defenses trying to see if they can manufacture an easy shot because as you say points are going to be hard to come by going into this last three minutes 45 seconds well both coaches getting as many uh, instructions as they can to their team that's not an issue in terms of team situation at the moment both with two but just 345 left work on the offensive glass from Fraser has got his team a new 14 and possession of the ball on the baseline they're trailing by one score I love for a run a 2-3 zone against UEL's inbound pretty much every possession here it looks like they've decided to go into man so a little bit of guessing by both coaches trying to figure out what the other's going to run and how they're going to approach it not running the baseline but it goes the other way corner up top here is Sundermott hit a couple of big threes early on and you can see they're out to him shot clock is down to one it has to go up it does go up it misses everything and that one is given as a shot clock violation Loughborough didn't quite cleanly grab it and usually let you go if you get a clean rebound there yeah, I thought the ref could have maybe allowed another half a second there to see the result before blowing the whistle, but left for possession as Justin Headley brings the ball down the court. A chance to make it a two-possession game here. Headley 
Well, he's turned the ball over. Great defensive stop for UEL. Connor drives in, kicks out. Sundermolt to tie the game. Yes, he's got it. And we are level at 69. Well, this has a feel of a game that's going to come down to who makes the last shot. Yeah, there's, there's overtime written all over this right now. That's the play that they used earlier on again, the Duku and Washington Open. He's and done again. it again, Victor and Duka with another three. And Loughborough back ahead. Well, what a game this is. What a finish this is. Caboza, it's going to be on Washington, and Washington's game is done. His fifth and final foul. And he stares to the heavens. And Connor Washington, the veteran for Loughborough. His contest is over, he's fouled out with 2.33 to go. Yeah, really tough call there. I'm not sure I would have made that call in that situation, but obviously the ref has a good angle on it. I think also very telling that they've used a set for Connor, and Connor's gravity, the way he's been defended, has opened up the do through the last two possessions. So are they going to be able to generate those looks without him on the court? be an end line ball that is the team's third person uh, foul sorry good head fake oh I thought for a second that wasn't going to drop it but Dokic but it did it's down to one really well executed out of bounds played by UEL there as well Bailey has it now Bowman Bowman looking to attack Bowman getting strong to the rim but it doesn't drop and he's clutching his calf there he seems to have hurt himself it's five on four here they've got numbers can they take advantage of it yes they can Stokic again Bowman still struggling and Bowman is going to hobble out of the game he's done something to his calf it looks like it may be a cramp yeah he says no I'm okay I think he's going to I think because the sub was was the sub I asked for? If it was, he'll have to come out. He's struggling to move. He gets 20 seconds before he has to sub. And looks like the rest have decided that that's the case. He's going to have to come off, so Joe Bielak comes on for him. Well, minute 50 to go. East London back in the lead now, 73-72. Bowman on the bench injured. Washington fouled out. Where do Loughborough go now? Bailey wants the ball. Working the pick and roll. Bailey's pass is in between two Loughborough players and out of bounds and that could be a really costly turnover for Loughborough. East London with a chance to stretch their lead. And Loughborough need to get a stop here. Sure, Blake Bowman's receiving some treatment right now. They'll be trying to get him back in as soon as possible as well. But crucial possession coming up for UEL here. Connor up top. Caboza. Caboza rearranges. Misses. It falls to Stokic. It's there again. Oh, not this time. It's batted about. East London have it again. Still, they keep possession. There's time on the shot clock here. They can run a few ticks. Well, that's probably not the best shot really from where they were. Gordon gets the rebound. We have a minute to play here, folks, in the championship game. Loughborough with the ball but trailing by a point. The defending champions on the brink. Bailey, big shot for three. Stairs it down and it goes! What a clutch shot from Elijah Bailey! And you could tell from his reaction he knew that was in as soon as he left his hand. A huge shot there from Bailey, and I was just about to say we've maybe not mentioned Stockich's impact in this fourth quarter enough, and then he lost Bailey on the Spain pick and roll. Bailey knocks it down to give up for a two-point lead. Well, a timeout called here by Coach Dave Greenaway. His team down by two. He can advance the ball. That would obviously shorten the clock, right? With 49 seconds to go down two, that's not the end of the world. It also gives uh, 
Bowman a little more chance. It looks like from where he sat that Bowman's going to come back into the game. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, if it's cramped as we expected, I'm quite sure he's seen the uh, physio briefly. They've stretched it, and he'll be back in straight away, ready to go. I think the, the danger of this fight for Loughborough is if they get lost on the offensive glass a little bit here. And we've seen Stockage sneak in for a couple already this quarter. Um, conversely, it's very, very hard for East London to, uh, to guard this five with so many moving parts. Well, I got the sense from that, from the assistant coach Hanson Morris, that they're not going to advance the ball. It looks like it's going to be in the backcourt, so they're going to take the full shot clock. The risk of that is if you take a lot of time and don't get a score, they still have fouls to give East London. need to score on this play. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what and who Dave Greenaway has brought this up for. Will they go for Caboza maybe coming off some off-ball screens or will they try and get a Carno back downhill? Or maybe some kind of flare action for Cooper. And it's a Carno who will start the offense. Cooper running the baseline, comes up to Stockwood. Cooper can't get the ball, neither can Okano. It's good defence so far from Loughborough. Okano though has a lane to the basket, kicked out, that's a long two, towed the line, it rims out, Gordon with the rebound. They need a foul here, East London. They need to foul, they can't let time go. Well, they get a foul, they lost a few seconds there. It's 21 seconds to go. Loughborough would have basically ticked that down to about four seconds. And then with the shot in the air, you could lose the whole whole clock. Absolutely. I mean, may, maybe East London are thinking that they can force uh, an eight-second violation or take maybe. a risk on that um, and then foul after that first eight seconds. But I think at this point, with it being a two-point game, you maybe want to get them to the foul line and, yeah. and try and make a play at the other end. You've got a lot of speed. You can get down the court quickly to try and make a play at the opposite end as well. They still need two more fouls to send them to the line. Well, Luffer have to get it in first. It's into Bailey. He holds on and awaits the foul. 19.6 left on the game clock. So lost about two seconds there. They'll be hoping for a, another quick one here. It's Bowman who's going to inbound. Luffer will be looking to get it into the hands of Bailey, possibly uh, Bilak or Headley, all three are pretty solid free throw shooters right now. In fact, everybody on the court's a pretty solid free throw shooter for Loughborough. Well, Bailey gets open, they didn't get it that way, they get it to Headley instead, and there comes the foul. Carno with it, so there is 17.9 seconds to go. And Justin Headley will go to the free throw line with a chance to make it a two-possession game. And an offense for defense sub there by Will Maynard, bringing Milo Gordon on for Joe Bielak. Defense for offense. Well, he's made the first. So, worst case scenario, it's a live ball situation, up three for Loughborough. And this one will really give them the edge with 18 seconds to go. A lot of pressure on this free throw for Headley. Oh, he's missed it. And they have it. East London need a three to tie. Caboza. Caboza's going for the quick two instead. Caboza gets the quick two. And Will Maynard's going to call a timeout with 10.5 seconds to go. And that isn't the worst play in the world there from Bradley Caboza. Because everybody in the building is thinking they need a three. He's going to pull up for three. But they're still quite a bit of time with 10 seconds to go get the quick score yeah absolutely I think it's great clock management by Carboza he sees that there's no help at the rim puts it on the floor Sm uh, smart decision by Justin Headley to let him go not give up the M1 in that situation but really good take by Carboza gives him a chance now to come out get a foul and then run something at the other end so I'm interested in uh, your view here as a coach you've obviously got the option to advance the ball into the front court which obviously takes it further away from your basket should you turn it over but it's a slightly more difficult place to inbound the ball versus if you take it under the basket on a made score you can run the baseline you've got a lot more 
real estate in which to pass the ball in? I think a lot of it for me depends on what type of team I'm playing. My big concern with not advancing it is you're now inbounding it under your own basket. And if you turn that ball yep, over, it's a straight layup. It's a straight layup. It's an easy win for the opposite team. So I, I like Will Maynard's decision to advance it here. Yes, it gives you a little bit less space, but I think you know if you can, if you're confident that you can execute your stuff, you're okay with that. Well, it looks like very similar setup to the previous play. And Bailey had got open first before uh, I think it was Headley last time, who who then got open as well. So they they ran it well. All they have to do is do something similar and get it to one of them. Uh, Headley inbound in here. Bowman's going to be open off the flashback. Bowman is fouled and he will go to the free throw line. That was a really nicely executed play to be fair. Yeah, really nice. Used uh, Bilak and Bailey to drag the defense away and just allows Bowman to flash back to the ball wide open. Well, Bowman has had his struggles from the free throw line today. Just 7 of 12. But if ever he needed to to go in, it's right now. We should know both teams have one timeout left to call here. Oh, the first one is short. So whatever happens, East London are going to have a chance to either tie or send the game to overtime. Bowman trying to make it at least a two-point game here. Do you watch Justin Headley here. He's a sneaky good rebounder in this situation. Well, he's made the second. And it's going to be a timeout called by Coach Greenaway. 8.3 seconds to go. I'm not going to ask you whether he's going to advance the ball or not, because of course he's going to advance the ball. But do, do you go for the win in this situation? Just take it to the rim. Just give it to, to Caboza or Cano and take it to the rim. I, I think they will have something drawn up to attack the rim, whether that's with Caboza or Cano, but it'll also be uh, a, a hammer screen on the weak side, something that allows the ball to be kicked out for three also. I also think that he'll find a way to get either Fraser or Stockage into the key to rebound the basketball so that that shot probably goes up with about four seconds left on the clock to give him a chance to get a tip in, try and finish the game. Oh, I'm with you. I think option number one would, in my in my ideal world, would be give it to one of your guards and let them attack the rim because you've got the chance of A, them scoring, B, them drawing a foul, maybe even both of those things, which would be best of all worlds. And if Loughborough take it away, then you look for the kick. Keep, keep an eye out as well in this situation for maybe something, a, a lob or a backdoor cut from somewhere just to start the out-of-bounds off. A is an easy look and B to distract the defense in order to open up whoever it is that's going to drive down the lane. Well, they had an excellent out-of-bounds play earlier from the baseline. Can they come up with something as efficient from the wing to either force overtime or potentially even win the game? Arno will have the ball from the side. Loughborough, by the way, still with one foul to give. 8.3 on the clock. Interesting to see if they use this on the catch. As Caboza come into the ball, it doesn't come to him. He's back to Okano. Okano, he's got a lane to the basket. Oh, he's just lost a dribble on the fadeaway for overtime. Back of the ring, it doesn't go. And Loughborough have won. Loughborough survive on the final play to win the Bucks Championship yet again. And look at them celebrate on the court. Incredible scenes here at Loughborough University. They were pushed all the way by the University of East London. But they survived at the death to win by two. Yeah, and you can see the jubilation there from the players. Super happy, super excited to take that win. And you know, a lot of credit, I think, there to Coach Maynard, the plays he ran. They got Connor Washington and Victor Naduku 3-3s three between them when they were down. Got them some momentum, got them up. Um, really well coached game by both coaches, I think. Well, a fabulous game of basketball. If ever you were going to have a championship game, that is how it should be played out. Both teams laying it all on the line. And once again, for UEL, some heartbreak against Loughborough. It seems to be the case 
every year, but this surely is uh, the worst of them all because it was there for them. They had their chances, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. We, we talked about that little bit of veteran experience at this level, you know, having somebody like Connor, who's that little bit older, um, I, and having been in these situations so many times in the last three, four years for Loughborough as well. I think maybe that's the difference, but also Loughborough made some big shots, you know, the bottom of the line, uh, the end of the, line, end of the day, you have to make shots to win basketball games. Loughborough had a, a little run where they made some big shots and it allows them to sneak ahead and take the win in a very, very difficult competitive game. Well, you can always see in situations like this the, the beauty, if you like, of sport, the jubilation at one end, the dejection at the other, and on such fine margins do those emotions switch. I mean, that last play could easily have gone in and sent us to overtime. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I've known Sam for a long time. He he likes that turnaround jump shot. That's a favourite. He'll be absolutely uh, gutted that he's missed that. But I thought Loughborough did a great job of switching to deny the inbounds, made it difficult. UEL countered by getting it back to the inbound and getting Sam Akano downhill. A really tough, tough shot, and Loughborough made it a tough shot. Rims out, and then everybody's on the glass and they managed to swipe it away well in some ways the, the the bounce on the rim probably didn't help them they'd rather it come straight out to give them a chance at the offensive rebound but there is the bounce of the ball as it goes and Loughborough once again are the Bucks champions they somehow always seem to find a way and they had to battle back here today they led early on of course by double figures they trail by as many as nine in the second half and still had work to do in the fourth quarter but they were able to get themselves up that hill and to the mountaintop well UEL will get their medals it's scan consolation really but they contributed amazingly well to a great game of basketball yeah absolutely it's a, it's a really well-rounded team performance is Sundermelt with 13 points on 5 of 8 shooting Cooper with 13 on 6 of 12 Caboza finishing with 14 4 of 17 and Akano on 5 of 16 for 13 also so really well spread out scoring effort by UEL well, they get there medals and it is always the worst real feeling in sport when you come for the gold and you go home with the silver it, 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 it's easy for me to say you should reflect on the season and how well you've done and the fact that you got to the final and all of the games that you want to get here and all of that it's very hard to do it in this moment yeah, yeah absolutely and I think one of the things that people underestimate is how much reflection goes on before a final you know you take a lot of that in you absorb that you absorb your journey so it actually makes reflecting post-final or, or in this moment even more difficult because you've already absorbed a lot of those emotions prior to the final well Lofra will come and receive their medals and a lot of really good performances at different times in the game different things Bowman early the shots that uh, and Duku hit Bailey at times. There were a lot of different contributions from this Lopra squad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Victor Naduku, three of four from three. You know, nine points doesn't look like a lot, but they were timely big shots from him. Um, similarly for Connor, Connor Washington, nine points on three of four from three also. And then two big performances, obviously, by Elijah Bailey with 15. And Blake Bowman with 23, finishing on six of 14 from the field. coming up for their medals and we'll get uh, the MVP announcement very shortly as well I mean Bowman obviously led the scoring but because of the timing of some of the contributions from some of the other players I'm sure it's not a slam dunk that he's the MVP he may well get it he does also have 17 rebounds to his name as well. He's pretty good. <laughs> He's pretty good to be fair. <laughs> well, 
Washington goes up for his medal. He's, he's made that walk a few times in his career, Connor Washington. He knows how to receive the winner's medal. Maynard almost forgot to go get his medal there. Uh, busy day for Will Maynard winning in the ABL semi-final and coming straight to win a Bucks final. Literally straight as well. The game was slightly delayed, so he, he didn't have a ton of time to warm up with his team. Well, Blake Bowman has just been announced as the most valuable player of this final as you say 23 points 17 rebounds couple of assists in there as well and he really set the stall out early in this game yeah absolutely i mean he had that strong start i think was it was it the first eight points for Luffer? i think yeah, he scored um and then you know turned up big down the stretch and got to the foul line repeatedly Now they will go and uh, stand behind the uh, champion's banner. They will receive the trophy. Justin Headley gets the handshake and the uh, trophy. It's usually customary to run in behind or in front of your teammates. They're all getting ready for it. Your 2024 Bucks men's basketball champions Loughborough University. Well, they've done it so many times that uh, they are used to this by now, Loughborough, but it, it never gets old, does it, winning championships? No, absolutely not. And they'll be ecstatic. And there'll be a great feeling around the camp. Obviously, they still have some NBL and BBL games to go this season, but this will certainly help lift the group moving forwards. Well, they pose for the uh, cameras, for the pictures that I'm sure you will see all over social media in the not too distant future. As Loughborough celebrate yet again another Bucks championship. They were pushed right to the very last by UEL, but they have come out on top by 75 points to. 77 in dramatic circumstances here in Loughborough and we will have some reaction for you very shortly. especially so early on in our careers is that you have an outside perspective and like a go-to person that you can go and ask any questions regarding a situation or your career path. Having a mentor at ICG has really helped me by giving me a perspective of the company as well as my own personal improvement from a outsider's perspective. So I'm able to see and get different feedback of my own progress from someone outside of my team.
makes Aldi different is how much responsibility they give to each and every one of us in the business and with that comes a lot of trust. Three months into your training you could be uh, running the store on your own, responsible for ordering all the stock, making sure the staff are happy. Aldi really believes that young people can do great things. It's, it's definitely something that excited me and attracted me to the role. I felt really supported at Aldi. From day one you're paired up with your mentor who is with you throughout your whole journey. You develop a really strong network with your peers, you can always pick up the phone to them. But you all work part of a team towards the common goal. I really valued my time in store because I think it's a really important part of you learning the practical day-to-day -day of the store operation. It's actually really exciting and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a change every single day um, and that variety really uh, attracted me to the role. Singleton sniping. Oh, oh, Tilly Smale is on the scoreboard, and Harbury University surely at this stage now. Harbury University, the women's national league champions. Destiny Day ends with Exeter and Buck Super Rugby national champions. Sum up your feelings after that. It was a tremendous game of basketball. Yeah, great game. Uh, super happy for the guys, especially, you know, the, the final year guys, Joe B, like Milo, CJ, um, Elijah, Justin, Connor, all of them. Yeah, super happy. That, this one was for them. And you guys came out super hot at the beginning, got a, got a double figure early, but to be fair to UEL, they came right back at you. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, yesterday and the week leading up to this, uh, we were talking about coming out and knocking them out first. You know, I feel like we did that, but they got up and uh, they fought us back all the way up to the end. Yeah, congrats to them guys, but, you know, we came out on top and uh, super happy for that, super happy. And the fourth quarter, Victor and Connor hit some big three-pointers for you guys when you need to get back into that game. Uh, yes, sir, big time. Elijah, too, uh, put us up, too, uh, big time, man. Can't, can't thank them enough. It's what we needed. And down the stretch, you, you managed to get to the free throw line, make some, make some free throws. You were struggling a bit there with cramp as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I need to work on my free throws, that's for sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fasting too, so, uh, you know, I was cramping up in the game. But, you know, all I can say is thank God and, um, yeah, you know, we, we came out on top. And you guys got that last shot. What was that last play like? You got eight oh, seconds man. to keep him out. Yeah, big time. I mean, I saw him fumble the ball a little bit. Um, was it Justin that was guarding him? I knew that Justin, uh, you know, he's a good defender. He was going to contest it well. Uh, I just wanted to be there for the rebound. Milo was there too. Yeah, I came up with it big time, big time. Well, congratulations. Thank Great you performance much, from you. you. Go and enjoy your Thank celebration. You Thank you. Well, an excellent victory here from Loughborough, seeing off UEL in dramatic circumstances, a two-point win, and once again, Loughborough are the champions. We'll have the women's game very shortly, but for now, goodbye. <laughs>